Hey, what's up guys, Nuno here. Have you ever used Lumion landscape tools and noticed that you cannot get the precision you need to create that specific path or forest trail? So in today's video, I'll show you a simple trick to create a realistic terrain in Lumion. I'll use only assets from the Lumion library so you can follow along. So let's get started. The purpose of this video is to show you an alternative to the terrain tool that you have in, uh, in Lumion. Because with the, the terrain tool, if you go here in the landscape, and you can paint basically the minimum size you have, it's this. So if I bring someone to have as a reference, you see it's still quite large brush. So if you start painting around, you cannot make the these paths, you know, like for people to walk or something like this. And also, if you go to the textures, you can only put a diffuse and a normal map. You cannot add the displacement as well. So let me show you in another scene how to achieve the look we saw in the beginning of the video. Okay, so this is basically what I modeled for this scene. And I want to show you that you can do this type of scene all with the uh, materials from the Lumion library. So I'll go here and I'll go to various and we have here soil. And on this soil, I'm going to use this uh, on the third tab, this one. Yep, so this one. And I'm just going to increase the scale a little bit. About here, seems fine. And uh, all the other settings, I'll leave it as it is. I'll hit OK. This is a Lumion preset scene, and so it has these trees. I just copied one of them and added here. And I wanted to have like a, a path coming from here where the bicycle is and going all this way like this. So what you need to do now, it's to take a render from this scene. So to do this, we'll go to the render and already have here my scene set up. I can just press and preview how it looks if you have the Lumion 10 version. And I'm going to take a, a render. So now this is my render. As you can see, I have all of these um, stone elements here, the bicycle and nothing else. Basically, we don't have any grass, nothing. So now we need to start adding those grass elements. And this works well for images only because we are going to later blend this in uh, Photoshop. So we'll go here and we'll select 3D grass. It can be this uh, one, for example, circular grass. And I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. I'm not going to touch any of the settings. And I'm going to go back to my render. And now if I hit preview, we can see how it looks. And we'll just take a new render of this. And this is how it looks. Okay. Now we need to add a third variation of this grass. One that it's a little bit uh, more wild grass and higher. So to do this, let's go back to the scene. And here we have, for example, this one, wild grass. Again, I'm not going to touch anything else. Just leave it as it is. And if we preview, okay, it looks nice. I'm just going to take a new render now. Okay, this is how it looks. We can see that now we have a, we have a much more wilder grass here. Okay, so it looks nice. I also made um, some adjustments here. I added a couple of elements. Uh, let me just rotate here the sun position so you can see better. And uh, okay. So I added some grass elements from uh, Lumion library. Okay, you can find them if you go here to nature, if you go to grass. So all of these ones here. So I start this wild grass. I start adding a couple of this to the scene. I added some rocks, some tree stumps, 
and some uh, uh, flowers as well. Okay. I added them a little bit randomly to the scene. And after this, we take another render. So if you will check it out. By the way, if you want to learn how to make realistic PBI materials, I have a video for that. I'll give a link in the top right corner and in the description below this video. So if you take any render, so this is how it looks. Okay. I also took the ambient occlusion because with this ambient occlusion, I'm going to give a little bit of extra shadows where I, where I want specifically, for example, these areas here, these areas here, here. So I'll show you in the, in the Photoshop file. So here in Photoshop, I open all the renders. And as you can see, this one uh, here, it's the first one. All the other renders will go on top of this one as new layers. So this one, I copy paste here. Then it's this one. I'm just pressing Control A, then Control C, and then Control V. Actually, I can already close this. So, and the last one, and actually the ambient occlusion as well. Okay, can close this now. Okay, now that I have all the renders in layers here, I'm going to hide them all but one, this last one. And now I want to enable this one and create a mask here on this bottom here. And I'll just fill it with black. And to fill it with black, we, just, we can just press D on the keyboard and it will make this black and white. And now just press X. So this black color is on top. And now just press with the mask here selected, Alt backspace. Okay, now with a large brush, and I usually use one more or less like this type of brush and make it bigger. The opacity can make about, about here. And now you can just with a, a white color, you can just start painting some areas. Let's say that you wanted all of these areas like this. So here I know that it will be with grass. Here I don't want any grass. I want to start making a rough path. Okay. Okay, now you reduce again a little bit the opacity and just start painting a little bit more these areas, like so. And maybe a little bit here, so we have some areas where we don't have almost any grass, like so. And now reduce the brush size and just paint here on this area. Again, bring it back. You can uh, keep flipping between the black and white, so you can remove or add, okay, in some areas, okay. So this is a process that I recommend you to do when you already have the final render and you know exactly how it will be. Okay, now let's move to the other one. And this one will do the same thing. And now, We'll increase a little bit and let's say we want to add some here, for example, on these areas. I want here on this area on the hill to be full of this wild grass. So you have to kind of predict where the grass will be higher, for example, here around the tree, probably. And a little bit here, maybe here in the middle will be some as well. And a little bit here. So I just start to add a little bit of this randomly. Okay, so if we see the difference, 
One, two, okay. Now, last one. Uh, this one can do exactly the same thing. Um, just make it black and start erasing some parts. For example, I, I like this uh, bush here and this tree st stump as well. So, and here we can add a little bit in the middle around here of the tree. These ones are nice as well. Here we have some uh, log as well. And now reduce the brush size and make it here a little bit more. So I'm doing this uh, very quickly, but um, you can go even zoom in and go into all of the details and really try to, to make this the best you can. Okay, now one thing you can do is add, for example, remove this and here you see that we have this main grass. So I'm going to enable again and I'm going to make a UN saturation. I'm going to press Alt, so it's only affecting this layer. And I'm going to change a little bit the color. See a little bit like this and the saturation as well. And now I'm going to make it uh, black and I'm just going to paint some areas, for example, here or here, randomly. Okay, so we have some variation in the in the grass. Okay, you see this area especially. You can do the same here on this top one. I'm just going to add a color balance, make the same. And here I'm just going to make the tones a little bit different. Okay, now as I go to the shadows. Okay, now the same thing, just black. And now just paint it over a little bit. Again, just, I'm just randomly painting. Well, let's see the before. Okay, so it's just slightly, but uh, again, in nature, you don't have everything exactly the same tone of green. So it's always nice to make this. Now I will activate this emit occlusion. I'm going to make it uh, less saturated of this blue. So I'm going to press Control U and reduce the saturation. And also I'm going to press Control L and I'm going to push this level here and this here. So we have more contrast and going to make it multiply. Now I'm going to make again a mask fill it with black and then just paint with white in some areas. I'm going to select this brush here and gonna paint more or less these areas that I want a little bit more contrast. Couple here, here and here as well. Okay, a little bit too much here. Okay, so after all of this, I will just create a new layer and I'll go to image, apply image, okay. And I'm gonna go to filter, camera or filter. And I'm just going to press auto to see how it looks. Okay, I'm gonna adjust a little bit the temperature, maybe more like so. Exposure, a little bit more. Contrast is fine. Highlights are fine as well. Shadows as well. 
here I'm going to pump the texture a little bit, more detail, clarity as well. And uh, for this, yeah, that's everything. I just want now to go to filter and lens correction. I just want to add a little bit of a vignette. Like so. Okay. And this is the final image. So basically, if you check the first one, then we had the grass, then some variation, again, wild grass, more color variation, more grass elements, this time with the assets from Lumion, then some occlusion and the color correction. So in this way, we can add much more control, making these paths in, uh, in Lumion. The only downside is that we have to take three or four renders and it just works for images. But uh, it's a nice little trick that, uh, that you can use. And by the way, if you want to take your renders to the next level, I have a Lumion render course. I'll give a link to it in the description below this video. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumb up, subscribe and click the bell button to get notified when I publish new videos. See you in the next ones.